Shane Peterson just sent a message, just a picture, to say she's through. Amen and in full agreement. How wonderful is that?
There is no one like you, God. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. There's nobody like you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. That the angels bow before you, heaven and earth adores you. What a mighty God we serve. Praise the Lord. It is Wednesday night. We are in a season of prayer, summer fasting, but we're all pressing into the kingdom of God. Glory be to God. Greetings to every single one of you. It is a blessed Wednesday night. It's heating up in Joburg. I trust you are warm wherever you are. But uh, I just want to thank the team and their tremendous work that they're doing on the ground here to make sure that we can present excellence to you. And uh, the teams have been phenomenal, so we thank the Lord for that. Wednesday night, uh, we're just thanking God for testimonies, healings. I know we have our daughter online, Shan. She's come out of an operation just now. Um, God has been with her. She's just sent messages with thumbs up. Come on, let's thank the Lord for her victory. Let's thank the Lord for her breakthrough. I get so excited for people's breakthrough, financially healing their bodies, families and homes, that they become fruitful for the kingdom of God. It is glorious. It is amazing to watch. It's, a, it's awesome to see when the kingdom begins to manifest and the kingdom culture manifests all around us. With the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and adds no sorrow. It is here tonight. I'm so excited to share the word and um, it is glorious. Let's greet a few people quickly and get into the word tonight. It is glorious. Praise the Lord. We've seen some of the family that's online. Naomi is there. Marco is from Cape Town. The family is over there. They're pressing into God for some real tremendous things. We're praying for you and that fruitfulness will manifest all around you and your family. Peter's from Zambia. He's in, in the house. Pastor Michelle's in the house. Maddie is in the house. Uh, Venice, uh, greetings to all the family. Ingrid is in the house. We got Raquel, our family's in the house. Carmen is in the house. Greetings to every single one of you. We are thanking God. Please tag somebody, please share it online. Let's get into the word tonight. Tonight is going to be fire. It's going to inject a lot of hope and faith inside of you concerning the season. Um, it is very powerful when you begin a breakthrough into the kingdom of God. I've shared that many times that many people have switched kingdoms, but they haven't switched systems. And what you're busy with right now is a kingdom system. That when you get into this kingdom system, everything about your life, your family, your home, everything changes. Everything changes. Your life can never be the same again. Trust me, it is, it is um, uh, sometimes challenging, sometimes it's frustrating. But if you look at uh, Sarah, who produced after 25 years, Hebrews 11, 11, we have a scripture there that says that Sarah received faith to conceive. May that be your testimony in this time of praying and fasting. May you give birth to the things of God. May you give birth to the kingdom of God and the plan and the purposes of heaven. Because when you get it right once, you know, it's like that little seedlings we've planted already, maybe now 40,000 of these seedlings on the, on the land. And the project is, is in full swing and underway. And um, we now had him to feed. I, I walked through those fields tonight. And we're making sure that every one of those seedlings get enough water. They're in the ground, but they need enough water. And tonight you're going to get enough water for you and for your life and for your destiny. And uh, we had to go to certain ones that aren't getting water because we have a drip system that we put in place. And with that, it's, they're in the soil, but they need the right amount of water. Too much water uh, creates a problem. No water at all, you know, creates its own problem. But we're now having to maintain and make sure that every single one of those seedlings take root, and begin to grow. Because the first time the first uh, harvest comes in, uh, it's three, four seasons of just continuous harvest. It's going to be a tremendous blessing. It's worth taking the time to actually water them, make sure there's enough compost on them. I hope you have enough trouble that will um, challenge you in a way that would make sure that you can come into your destiny. Because everybody, every one of us needs enough trouble, a bit of manure. I mean, when, when, uh, when they were going through some trouble, when Jesus came to this tree and he said, just cut this tree down, the master said, look, just give me another year. 
Let's me dig around this thing and, and put some manure around it. And let's make sure that this thing grows before we chop it down. And I'm praying for you today that you, because the only reason why we are here is because there's been enough trouble. The only reason why we had to press into the kingdom is because of the trouble that was around us. The broke, being, in, being broke, marriage is not working, homes are not working, struggling in, you know, financially, health-wise, children, whatever. You know, no destiny, no purpose. It was because of trouble. And some of you need to thank the Lord even tonight for your trouble. Yeah, not for it, but in the midst of it, you can thank God uh, in the midst of your trouble. Okay? So um, tonight is going to be awesome. Tag somebody. Share to your timeline. Let's get into the word tonight. Let's pray for you. Um, I'm really trusting God these next 14 days. Um, well, we're on to our third day already. And we're trusting God that you're going to begin to receive the breakthrough and the answer. Because the first day you break through, hear this apostle nicely. The first time you come through, you will never look back. Never look for a job again. Never beg anybody for anything. You will experience the favor of the Lord. You will only progress. You will grow. Your roots will go deeper. You will produce much more fruit for the kingdom of God every single year. In there is all your healing. In there is all your provisions for every single month. If you can just become fruitful for the kingdom of God. And it must be your desire. The command is there in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and 28. But it is also that Jesus said in John chapter 15 for us. But let's pray. Father, we just thank you tonight for your precious word. We thank you for the sons and daughters that you've raised up for a time such as this. We're born into the kingdom for a time such as this. That they can come into your kingdom, Father, and produce much fruit. Father, I pray tonight that it will, as it makes sounds, you make sense. But I pray that the anointing will break this yoke, inject hope into our hearts. We thank you for the victory tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said a good amen and amen. Um, to every single one that's pressing in for business, um, you know, we would not be in the kingdom if there wasn't any trouble. The Bible says and, until John, uh, you know, they, they were preaching the prophets, uh, but until, until then, uh, the kingdom has been preached and everybody's pressing in. We're pressing into the kingdom and that should be what it is for you and for your life. Uh, the trouble that's around you should let you know that God is calling you into a kingdom. And the title of my sermon tonight is to plow in hope. Plow in hope. That's the word for you tonight. So um, Luke chapter 9 and verse, verse 57. Luke chapter 9 and verse 57. It says, now it happened as they journeyed on the road. Is it's dealing with the cost of discipleship. It says, now is it, it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him. Everything about this scripture and what you're reading here is Jesus is having a conversation with people while they're walking. That's the kingdom. The kingdom is forever progressing. He's trying to give you some revelation and understanding. There's not one place where the kingdom is standing still. Not one place. Everything about the kingdom is like a seed that's in the ground. Once it's in the ground, you might not see it this season, but you'll, you're going to definitely see the fruit of what you planted because it's forever progressing. It's forever growing. It's forever moving forward. And that is giving you a kingdom revelation there. That the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Isaiah chapter 9 says that. So th they're speaking about discipleship. But it's quite interesting that it, this journey, this conversation is while they're on the road. So it happened as they journeyed on the road. You should be on the road in developing, becoming more what God had called you to be. Becoming more Christ-like, becoming fruitful in those seven areas of your life. From your mind to your, for the ladies in your womb, for those that are looking for babies. Your eyes, your lips, your hands, your feet, and your character. There should be whatever you're putting your hands to. Your mind, your eyes, your lips. Hands, whatever you put in your hands, so it should prosper. Um, the one said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. That's discipleship. That is you becoming more Christ-like. That's you becoming fruitful for the kingdom of God. This is you coming into what God has called you to be. And he, he, he makes you the best version of you. The world cannot give you this. Only the kingdom can give you this. Because you were called into the kingdom, you were born for the kingdom, all your gifts, your talent, your past, your experiences, your mistakes even. All of them, God factors them all in his kingdom. And he brings you into your purpose, uses your gift, and you even the deepest desire in your heart. That is godly. I'm not talking about ungodly desires. 
your deepest desire is found is because God deposited it in you. And when you have an encounter with the kingdom of God, the thing that's on the inside of you begins to manifest. This was my desire to speak to people. I was just, I could not. I didn't know how I could ever. And it frustrated me until God broke the yoke from my life and allowed me to understand the power of his kingdom. And that is the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing and I'm enjoying it. But have a look at this. And Jesus said to him, he said, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. May that be your desire. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. But the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Then he said to another, so he's dealing with on the road and he's calling people into following him. Not following their own ideas, not following someone else's idea. He says, follow me. That's you being born again, you following after Jesus and what he wants. But he said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Then he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and preach the kingdom of God. That's where the power lies. It's found in the kingdom. Because we're dealing with momentum. We're dealing with movement. We're dealing with fruitfulness. We're dealing with the people that will follow after Jesus. And the end game of it is that he makes you fruitful for the kingdom of God. That's why you can go from no fruit to fruit to more fruit. And then eventually much fruit. Because that's the end game for your life. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. So the whole message is about the kingdom of God. The message is about progression. The message is about making no excuses. The message is about plowing because he is very interesting. He, he starts to speak about the kingdom because there is a difference between a saved mindset and a kingdom mindset. A saved mindset prepares you for heaven. A kingdom mindset looks for progression in the earth. That is very good. That is very good. So Jesus, let's unpack some of the things that Jesus gives them here. He says, he says something here. He says, um, he's on the journey and, and, and then he's, he says, I'll go wherever you go. He says, well, let's understand this thing. And Jesus throws in something that's almost ab in a way. He says, foxes have holes and, uh, and, the, and birds of the air have nests. And he says, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. That is powerful. So he started to speak about birds and nests, not just flying. He's speaking about foxes and holes, not just running around. So the holes has got to do the place of intimacy where foxes produces foxes. Are you with me? And when birds get into the nest, it's about reproductive organs. They only make a nest because they know the babies are coming. And Jesus is saying, but I as the son of man, not the son of God, not the one that was made for heaven, the one who came to bring man his salvation. He says, I got nowhere, but the son of man has got nowhere to lay his head. It means that the first portion of the scripture lets you understand that the first thing that if you were ever going to produce more of Christ in the earth and become fruitful, intimacy is number one. That means I've got to take, grab a hold of his thoughts. Because Isaiah chapter 55 says this about thoughts. If you can go with me there quickly. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse, um, I think it is verse 8. Thank you, Jesus. Here we go. Isaiah 55, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Look at the revelation. He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not, your ways are not my ways. So it tells you that thoughts produces ways that you only are you only are where you are is because of what you were thinking is because you've had conversations with people 
whether it be an education system, whether it be an unbeliever, whether it be somebody who's a doubter, who, who, somebody that is walking in fear, you only have what you have because of who you've been listening to. Because we said the brain produces babies too. It's ideas. So you've captured somebody's idea. You've gone in and you've grabbed a hold of someone's idea for your prosperity. I'm watching people running around and speaking to all kinds of people, taking in all kinds of information, and they, their feet is they positioned in a place that's got nothing to do with what the kingdom of God has got for their lives. Because it's either birth out of Keturah, which is your soul, or out of Hagar, which is your flesh, or it comes from Sarah, which is your thoughts that comes and emanates from the Spirit of God, what God told you. What God told you who you are. And so you've got to take a moment in a time like this and praying is that you are pushing aside every other thought. Because you are looking for God's thoughts. Why? Because his thoughts, every, not his thoughts, thoughts produces ways. We are where we are only because of what we were thinking. So Jesus is saying, will you capture my thoughts? Can I rest my head by you? Can you and I become intimate? I wrote this out. I thought it was really interesting. <laughs> Have a look at this one. Because Jesus was saying, I need to lay my mind somewhere. I need to give you my thoughts. And if you understand Jesus and who he is, and you are done going past a saved mindset into a kingdom mindset, then your number one thing is to find out who he is. Because he never came to bring you another religion. He came to usher in a kingdom. Because Adam never lost a religion. You lost a kingdom. And in the kingdom of God, for you to function and become what God has called you to be, the number one thing is fruitfulness. Because you go from fruitfulness and you end up in a place of dominion where you owe no man a thank you. You're out of debt. It's a God idea. And you are gonna, you're not gonna, you're not gonna go to a bank. You're not gonna go anywhere else. You're gonna, you're gonna get your cars cash. You're gonna have God ideas that will, that will establish you and buy your houses cash. It can happen. It's just that you were trained only under a system that says the only way you can get your stuff is by going through the banks. Who said so? What about the favor of God? How about somebody else coming and just and saying, putting you in, in their will and saying, this is for you? God can do it. God just needs a believer. The question is, whose thoughts have we been taking on? Whose mind are you having? Who, whose mind are you sleeping with? Uh, he's, he's, he's talking about intimacy, man. If foxes produces foxes and birds produces birds, then the Christ, mind of Christ, can only produce the Christ thoughts in the earth. And that mind is always plowing in hope and producing fruit for the kingdom of God. Always. He said, by this my Father's glorified, that you produce much fruit. That's what he said. So we're speaking about intimacy. So... <laughs> When, when you've had, listen to the statement, whoever you've been spending time with has been sleeping with your mind and the babies are coming. <laughs> because if your mind can produce babies, tell me who you've been speaking to. Tell me what you're reading. Tell me who you're associating with. And I will show you clearly where you're going to. It was that babies are coming. You need to abort those babies that comes from unbelief. You need to abort those things that are not of God and let the word of God become your standard and the mind of Christ then becomes the place where you begin to function from and out of the mind of Christ, your life becomes fruitful for the kingdom of God. We, we found that out. Uh, just put up those, those seven places of, of understanding the power of, of um, fruitfulness and the seven places of fruitfulness. I want to say that again to somebody. Have a look at this, sli this slide. Have a look at this. Because this is important for your, you and your destiny. Show me you've been hanging out with. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. One, of course, is the womb. It's your children. Two is your mind. It's ideas. Your eyes produces vision. Your lips produces words. Your hands produces products. Your feet produces the faith. So I'm standing here only. Left a company more than 20 years ago. I'm standing here because faith brought me here. I took in a fresh word. My, your feet will always end up where your mind began. We are only doing what we're doing because I had a vision from God about this, about this embassy and what it would look like. We're planting what we're planting because it was a seed first planted in my mind. 
It was a word that came to my mind first. We're now putting, we're having the products in our hands and we started to produce because you cannot ignore what's going on in your mind. You cannot ignore the fact that you've been hanging out with the wrong people, speaking unbelief. Have you ever been in somebody's company and you develop emotions of jealousy or anger or offense or bitterness and you feel that all men are dogs? It produces an emotion inside of you because you were sitting and speaking to somebody because thoughts produces ways. So Jesus is asking the question. He's like, he's like I, I, I can see foxes producing foxes. Birds are producing birds. But I'm struggling to let my mind rest even upon my church. I mean, there's no problem with the body because he, they made sure the body is taken care of. We are called the body of Christ. And the gates of hell will not prevail. But he's still looking for a place where every individual who is following after him will take his mind. And this is you tonight. That you begin to get his thoughts. That you go to, when you're praying and when you are fasting and when you go to bed at night, what are you doing? You're not going to bed by yourself. You're going to bed by the, with the word of God. You're getting intimate with the word. And it's going to produce a baby. And it's the bad, that baby is called fruitfulness. It's called fruitfulness. Because his thoughts becomes my ways. And we're doing what we're doing because of his word operating in and through our lives. You begin to understand that thoughts leads to ways. Somebody please type that in because that's important. Thoughts leads to ways. Don't you ever kid yourself that I can hang out with unbelievers and hang out with just anybody running around everywhere trying to make a plan financially and then run out here. and uh, it's, it's, Don't believe the lie that that unbelief won't settle inside of you. May the Lord cleanse you tonight of everything that is unbelieving, fearful, doubting and unbelieving. The power of God is working in me, compelling me, propelling me to move forward and advance with his, kingdom, with, with his kingdom. Why am I saying that? Because he goes from this intimacy space and then he begins to speak about, um, he, he then says, well, then you follow me. He says, well, the first thing is, I, let me go and bury my father. Now, Jesus wasn't trying to be rude when he said, let the bed, dead bury the dead. He was dealing about now when somebody dies, you know, you, you bury them in a week and, you know, that's, it's, it's done. It's over. Basically, your life doesn't stand still. Your life progresses. That's what it means. The, the old Jewish custom is that they would have to wait a year before they would, they would, they would bury the, the, the father uh, and, and then they would have to go and, and dig up the bones after a year and move it to a certain space. It was all their, their customs. So you are saying religion is standing in the way of you becoming fruitful. The next one was, he says, well, he says, let the dead bury the dead, their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another, also he said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid farewell to, to uh, who at my house. He says, you don't understand, you're dealing with traditional things. You, you, you got your priority, it's, it's all valid, you know. It seems like you, it's, it, you, you're being unkind if you're not with the people that are mourning. It seems like you're unkind because you're not in the house and you're dealing with your inheritance and you want to put your inheritance first and family traditions first. Where Jesus is saying, you go and you preach the kingdom because then he said, Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow looking back is fit for the kingdom of God because this kingdom demands that I break from everything to from my religion, from every kind of tradition, everything that I, that I held dear to my life. We did that. We did that. We took, I took all of my skill, my training, my development. I sold all of my um, IT skill, all of my house, all of that, that God, and I put it in the kingdom of God. I bought the whole field. I bought the field. And the power of you being in the kingdom of God means that you need to sell out for the kingdom of God. The problem with most people is they don't come into the kingdom and they're not experiencing it because they've not sold out yet to the kingdom of God. That's what he was saying. Discipleship costs you because it means I've got to let go of what I believe to be true. My traditions, my family, my, the things that people hold dear. I mean, I threw up all those things and said, God, I need your kingdom. I pray that that before you tonight, that you begin to experience the power of God's kingdom in your life. We're experiencing things from, from the kingdom that we did not even realize. Only because we made the kingdom our number one priority. I don't have another option. If it's for healing, I don't have another option. If it's for finances, I don't have another option. I don't have a plan B. I've put everything into the kingdom of God. And if God doesn't come through for us, then it's over. 
because I banked everything. I put the kingdom first. He says, you, unless you make the kingdom first, you can't make your family first. You can't put your policies first. You can't put all kinds of things first. Trust me, I've been here. It sounds like it's crazy. But we are standing here after how many? A decade? And we're seeing the power of God and his kingdom at work. See, so Jesus said, no one having put his hand to the plow, looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Now watch, it's important for you to understand that because we're not dealing with a plow that is um, he's showing you the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God, um, it is important to see the, the, the instrument and it's in the, the, the plowing instrument, if you can put it up for me. Um, and then look at, this is, this is a, 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 um, in agriculture, an instrument for turning up, breaking and preparing the ground for receiving the seed. It's drawn by oxen or horses and saves the labor of digging. Therefore, when he speaks about a plow, it's the most useful instrument in agriculture. So when he's speaking about this, he's dealing with somebody who is, if you have a, a look at that picture, you can find now we can put a tractor in front of, of those instruments. We've had the tractors on here and they've, they've dug it up in no time. In a week we had dug up like hectares of, of land. But what you're dealing with over here, um, we didn't have to guide and to guard uh, or to guide the, the, the plowing instrument. It was all, it's all automated and that's easy to understand. But this is the real picture. Because what this means is that you are looking at an animal that's leading it. And then you're looking at this, this, this plow at the back of it. And it means that it needs somebody to hold on to it and to guide it and to lead it. That's what Jesus was showing. And this is the picture I've given you because this is the power of this picture. Thank you, Gift. I appreciate that. So when you understand the plowing instrument, when you understand that it's, it's a man standing over this instrument and watching where this thing is going. But it is such a powerful instrument because it's breaking up the fallow ground. And I'm speaking to somebody tonight that needs to understand the power of the kingdom of God and the importance of you holding on. Holding on. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 9. This is a word for somebody tonight that has never seen fruitfulness in their lives. You've never experienced the power of God's kingdom. You feel condemned. You feel God has not called you. You think that John 15, you want to tear that scripture out of the Bible. You think it's not for you. But he says by this, my father's glorified that everybody becomes fruitful. In fact, that you produce much fruit. It's not just for, for Apostle Max. It's for everybody. It's not just for the Holland family. Come on, put your, your family name in there and begin to type your family name in there because we're calling for fruitfulness. We are praying for everybody that's under the sound of my voice that your family will not live a wayward life. You will not be a problem because anybody who's not fruitful attracts curses. When somebody is fruitful, they attract the blessing and the favor of God. Hear me, I've been down this road. I've been studying this. And God has been moving upon our lives in a really powerful and, and, and wonderful way. But I want you to see this in the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse, verse 9. For it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. Is it oxen God is concerned about? Or does he say it all together for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written. That he, please, this is for you, he who plows should plow in hope. And he who threshes in hope should be partaker of his hope. So we're going in this direction. I don't know what the kingdom's all about. I don't know what God has called us to do. I'm struggling. I just, every time I fast and pray, I get the same message coming out to you as being given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. I am clueless about the kingdom. I'm trying to pray. I'm looking for answers. Um, eventually, I end up at a, at a bookstore, and I see this teaching by uh, Bill Winston called The Mysteries of the Kingdom. I'm like, what? Somebody's got revelation about this stuff. And remember, I'm looking. I'm, I'm hoping that God is, I'm not going back to a job. I'm hoping that God has got something for me and my family. I'm hoping. And I'm looking to God. And we, remember, I gave the teaching about so hoping you'll reap a dream. We just kept on hoping that, God, you are somewhere here. I mean, you can thank God tonight, I mean, that he's kept us alive to give you the revelation of this because it is just a blessing. 
And so I end up in the store and eventually I buy all the teachings from Dr. Bill Winston and I consume everything. Because when you come to the kingdom of God, you can't go and say, well, I'm going to try still a bit of my, my traditions and try still some of my, my other. No, no, no. No, no, no. You can't go back. You can't go back to old traditions. You can't go back to your own re old religion. You can't sing those old religious songs because God is calling you into a place of fruitfulness. And what he wants you to do is he wants you to sow in hope. Here I am. I don't know this man. I start to sow into this direction. I, I hear him coming to the city. I, I go and I sow into his conferences. God then calls me to establish him and, and to do some things for him in, in Santon City, uh, uh, the convention center. We establish a platform for him to teach from, and we're just building relationships, sowing into his life. Eventually he says, who is this man? Can you tell him I want him to sit on my board? I mean, it's been a how many? Eight years maybe? Seven, eight years that we are with him. And, you know, we fly into Chicago. It came out of a place where one day I just walked into a bookstore. Are you with me? I'm not, I'm trying not trying to boast on me. I'm boasting on God and I'm showing you a kingdom system. I'm trying to show you that if you continue to sow in this direction and we didn't know where to go and didn't know what to do, but we kept putting our hand to the plow and not looking back. And we were plowing in hope, man. We were plowing in hope. This is a word for somebody tonight. You don't, you can't, don't let go of the kingdom of God. Don't let go of the things of the kingdom. I know that it seems tough. Like how are we going to get anything to come out of this ground? Because we, that God, what fruit, how, my family, my home, how can it be? The Lord says, continue to sow and, and plow in hope. And then you'll need to plow, this is what it says, that he who plows should plow in hope, and he who threshes in hope should be partaker of his hope. That means things are going to start to come to you eventually. We didn't know the road. We didn't know how to become fruitful. We had nothing. We were barren. We struggled in so many levels. But look what the Lord has done. Look at the campus, look at, look at, you know, agriculture, look at media, look at the equipment, look what the Lord has done only because of this one thing. You're on the road and the kingdom's on the move. And we decided to get in on God's plan. And we decided to keep sowing in this direction. We kept on serving in this direction. We kept on holding on when it seemed like nothing was happening. But he was saying to you, are you going to go back home? Or are you going to just keep on following me? Because I'm telling you now, you can miss your destiny because the next time you think, I'll, I'll get it next time. He says, the kingdom's moving. Someone's going to hear me today. Because the day I get fruitful and I walk through, you know, my August and it's been rough months and September and I start to see the first breakthrough in the kingdom of God. Man, there's no looking back. Because you continue to sow into your next season, then more harvest comes, then God calls for more, and then we're plowing, and we, we know it's tough, but we're breaking through, and we're holding on. Come on, somebody type it in there. Say, I'm going to keep on holding on. It's a word of encouragement for you. You need to plow in hope. Don't you quit in a season, in tough seasons. May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because you're in a season where if you've never seen the kingdom of God, you can't speak me out of the kingdom stuff. I've been on this road with God too long. I've, I've studied in a world system, got my job, God paid well. I understood how their system worked. I knew how they promoted. I knew what my rate was worth. I knew what my life was worth. I built my life around the system. And then God brought me into the kingdom and he says, this is the mystery of the kingdom of God. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to teach you how to operate out of this place because in every season, you are not supposed to be getting the same kind of money. That is not, it's not possible in the kingdom of God that you get a 1% increase and go and hang out with Casato and stand there and say, well, we need more jobs. Not in the kingdom. If you give every one of them the kingdom revelation and understanding, there should be nobody broke. In fact, in the kingdom of God, nobody's broke. If you really apply the principle of the kingdom of God and put the kingdom first and you become intimate with God, let his mind now come and rest upon you and your family and your home. How are we doing for time? And God's mind comes and rests upon you. Your feet will end up in the place of the fields that God has got for you and your family. And if you can learn how to plow and not quit, you can't look back. There's a scripture that says, remember Lot's wife. You're not supposed to look back 
on anything. You're supposed to know that you're in a season that I'm going to plow through this time of praying. I'm going to trust God in the season for me and my family because if I can get one breakthrough from the kingdom and Sarah can produce one, here comes the other babies, man. Here comes the next breakthrough because if I can get it right once, I will get it right every single time. God's doing things here with the people that has been rejected by the world in this place. My sons and daughters that are here don't have the degrees. They haven't finished off whatever. But the Spirit of God downloading strategies and wisdom for media of how to sit in the boardroom tables, how to deal with agriculture, imports and exports, how to get in all kinds of things. We're doing things that's astounding. And it doesn't come from the natural world. Let no man say they made you rich, but God. You coming into a kingdom of revelation and a spirit of understanding. Abraham could raise up 318 of his own sons in his own house. They were abandoned. They were adopted sons. And he raised them up and he made every one of them fruitful. They could take out kings, man, because of the kingdom system and being fruitful for the kingdom of God. I am telling you, listen to this apostle. The sons and daughters of the kingdom of God will far surpass what the world has done. They are coming in there. You still be saying, well, I got my salary. I got my increase. Not you. I'm talking about the one that, you know, that's in the world system. You're not in the world system. You're in the kingdom system. You're going to find acceleration. You're going to find breakthrough. You're going to find kind of resources and increase. That they, it's not, the sky is not the limit. The kingdom is the limit. And there's no limit in the kingdom. Stop going the world's way. That's why he told, he told Isaac, he says, Isaac, in this famine, don't you go and sow. Don't you go down to Egypt. You sow in this land. You sow in this kingdom. And in that same year, he reaped a hundredfold. Why? Because you're putting your hands to the plow and you're not looking back, Isaac. This is the work of God. And you need to remember that the, 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 the kingdom was made for hostile environments, man. The kingdom, if I could tell this to somebody, the kingdom is real. I'm standing here as a testimony for, as a testament for you that you will know my testimony, my family, my home. The kingdom is real. Let me prophesy this over you. There's some people that are struggling. I mean, you know, every tree that your heavenly father is not planted. God has to uproot. And how do you uproot it? You uproot it through the word of God. So I'm telling you that your salary is not the limit. That's not what God, God has got so much more for you. It's by faith. It's in a kingdom. If you stick with the kingdom process, there's a guarantee, look at this man. Not boasting on me, boasting on the Lord and his system. His system works. Everything you're looking for is found in the kingdom of God. God's got relationships. God's got doors. God's got his favor. God's got his hand. God will give you things that us. I mean, what do I know about agriculture? What do I know about it? Intimate with the word. I said, Lord, come and rest your head right here. I'm going to bed with your thoughts. And I'll wake up in the morning with the wisdom of God. Glory be to God. That'll be your testimony in Jesus' mighty name. They come on, you, you type it in. They say, Lord, rest your head right here. I said, you, you said there's no place to rest your head, but here, this is kingdom life embassy. You rest your head right here. You come and give me your thoughts. You come and give me your ideas. You come and show me which way to go. You come and guide me. I want to become fruitful for your kingdom. Is that anybody that's going to just pray with us tonight? That God's going to do a work in your life and in your home. If it's healing in your body, the kingdom must supply it. If it's finances that you need, the kingdom must supply it. If it's a visa you need, the kingdom must supply it. If it's a home that you need, the kingdom must supply it. If it's transportation that you need, the kingdom must supply it. Why? The kingdom is first. The kingdom is first. So remember that you, you, you the, you're the seed. You're the one that's putting your hand to the plow, but you, there is kingdom soil. There is this kingdom that is moving forward. And God is just saying to somebody tonight, hold on. Because it looks like nothing is happening. It's four weeks later. I walk through the fields tonight. And I say to you again. We've, we've planted, what, over 40,000 seedlings. It's just looking green on that field. It looked like nothing a month ago. Just dust everywhere. 
And now it's in the ground. And now we're watering it. And now we keep on growing and developing. That's your life. Your life. Listen to what 1 Peter 1 verse 22 says. Since, you've been puri- since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. You're born of incorruptible seed. You got born again. I got born again. Inside of me is incorruptible seed. It cannot be corrupted. What is needed is the mind. When my mind begins to agree with what God's word says, and that seed, and my life is planted in the kingdom of God, and I say yes, Lord, to fruitfulness, all of a sudden, this incorruptible seed breaks through concrete, breaks through any kind of hard space, and starts producing a beautiful harvest for the kingdom of God. I see you. I see you walking in the fullness of God's blessing. I see you becoming all that God has called you to be. I see the kingdom manifesting all around you. I see the blessing of the Lord guiding you and leading you every single step of the way in the mighty name of Jesus. So let's end with this. Let this, let the mind of Christ. Jesus was saying, look, if you're going to walk with me, you must get my mind. He says, well, I need to go and bury, I need to go and do. He says, well, then you don't have my mind. You don't have my thoughts. My thoughts toward you is to make you fruitful. That's my only focus. Is to make sure that you become fruitful for the kingdom of God. Let's deal with the mind of Christ. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. It reads, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The mind of Christ is the perfect mind that is full of hope. It's the mind that believes no matter what we go through, we will rise again. It's important to understand that because when I got the mind of Christ, I'm not turning back. I'm not looking to another solution. There's no plan B. It has perfect peace. It tolerates no fear. It refuses to be intimidated. It's full of grace and truth and courage. The mind of Christ is is the accurate mind of God in the earth, bringing heaven's perspective to a corrupt world. It's the matured mind that thinks on things that are true, noble, just, pure, and of a good report. The mind of Christ sets a clear path and does not deviate from it. That is the key scripture tonight. That you will not deviate Don't you let the devil lie to you and tell you that it's not for you. Don't let the devil lie to you and say that I'm doing this thing and there's no point. That that discouragement, that hopelessness is from the devil. You need to sow in hope. Because that's the scripture. Is that plow in hope. Whatever you're going to do right now, you're breaking through tough ground. You're thinking, God, where are you? Can you ever send a relationship? What are you going to do for my life? You know, where's the transport? The Lord says, just plow in hope. It's tough. Break up the fallow ground is the word tonight for you and for your family. Let's wrap it up. I need to pray for you. Because you are in a season of where if you've never seen fruitfulness before, you need to just understand the kingdom, the seed. If you're the incorruptible seed, born of incorruptible seed, you put yourself into the kingdom of God. All we have to do is we have to take that seedlings and plant them in the soil because the soil knows what to do. Someone going to hear me tonight. In that seed is the root system, are the leaves, the branches, the bark, the fruit, whatever you're looking for, it's in the seed already. Because the, when, you, when it goes into the soil, the soil knows what to do. This is the kingdom of God. The kingdom knows what to do. Can somebody trust the Lord tonight and say, my life is in the kingdom and the kingdom knows what to do with my life because my life will become fruitful for the kingdom of God. Mark 4, 26, and he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man would scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day and seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. 
You don't know how your life's going to develop. I had no idea that the decade ago when we started off, I would end up being doing what we're doing right now. I didn't know how. But God, how are you going to do it? This is exactly what he's telling you here. Exactly the same way. He says, the man just planted it in the ground. He scattered seed on the ground and he slept. He went to sleep. And when he got up, the seed should sprout and grow. And he himself does not know how. Why? Because the earth heals crops by itself. God don't need your help. He needs your obedience. First the blade, then the head. After that, the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately puts in the sickle. Because the harvest is come. You have somebody to help you. God has, has given you an apostle. God has taken us through what he's taken us through. It's been a tough journey. But we're standing here today because we've seen the harvest of so many things we've planted. And sometimes people get into the kingdom of God and they treat it like some religious service, but nothing happened on Sunday. And I sowed seed yesterday and nothing happened today. We're on this journey 20 years, man. We've been born again 24, 25 years now. And we've gotten into this kingdom and we've sold out for the kingdom, planting seed every single step of the way. There's some harvests we're seeing now only that we planted many, many years ago. And what, was, what is the deal? Just don't quit. Come on, somebody type it in there. Say, just don't quit. Tell your neighbor, tell your family, shout it out loud, scream it in your house. Just don't quit. He says, put your hands to the plow and don't look back. And plow in hope. Don't let the enemy lie to you. Don't let him talk you out of your harvest. Don't let him talk you out of the stuff season. Seems like there's dust everywhere. The rain hasn't come. What about the seed, God? What are we going to do? The Lord says, as you pray, you are sowing hope. You're going to reap a dream. I'm going to put your feet exactly where you need to be because this is the kingdom of God. If it's God's design and God's desire, imagine how much more God wants it from you than you want it from God. Fruitfulness comes from God. It was His desire. It's His design. You want it. God wants, God says, that's what I made you to do. That's what you were born to do, is to be fruitful. Because the harvest is coming. And when you find that man in that place, that woman in that place, man, they look different. They're not depressed. They're not fearful. They're not anxious. They're just moving with the kingdom of God. They, they're a different group of people because there's something that happens inside of us, I'm talking to all those that are actually kingdom people that understands fruitfulness. There's something that happens to my mind where I enjoy the word of God more than, more than ever because it's where I become intimate with God and He gives me an idea and the Spirit of God speaks to me. It's a joy. It's not a toil. It's not a struggle. There's no struggle even with the seed. It's in the ground. The kingdom's doing the work. The Father's doing the work. I mean, then God gives me an idea and then He gives me a picture. I enjoy it. The sons are coming here and we walk into the media room and production and I start to put out pictures and say, this is what the Lord showed me. And we put out presentations and, and we got strategies and, and what we're seeing. and uh, It's just been, it's glorious. It's glorious. Yesterday, you know, this, this past week, I'll just tell you what, what happened to us. Is that God showed me 22 things for 2022 that he's done in the last nine months for us. And I brought out the whiteboard and I showed the, all the staff. I said, come in, let me show you all the sons. I said, come and show you what God has done. I didn't even know it. We were busy with a turnaround strategy. We've got 22 places that the Spirit of God was working. No book gave it to me. No university gave it to me. The Spirit of God gave it to me. Why? Because the kingdom produces by itself. Don't you walk away from the kingdom of God. Don't you think that nothing is happening. While I went, went to bed, I prayed, nothing happened. Sat in on the teaching, nothing happened. Sowed seed, nothing happened. The devil is a liar. That thing is growing because the kingdom knows what to do. Somebody please type that out. The kingdom knows what to do. The kingdom is it's, 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 it's self-propagating. It will produce by itself. You just need to obey. 22 things that God has done. We're celebrating it and we, we bring it before all the staff and the sons and all the leaders of the church and showing you so many things that God has done. We had no idea. We've lifted up our heads this past week and said, let's just count this. The Holy Spirit said to me, count now nine months since December because from December until now, this is the change and transformation in this organization. It is phenomenal. <laughs> it's called the kingdom of God. Because you don't even know how he grows. I just was obeying the Holy Spirit every single step of the way. Look what the Lord has done. This is still the year of recompense. 
And God's got a plan for you and for your life and for your future. You go from your mind into your eyes and you see it. And you just keep on speaking life even when it looks like death all around you. You just use your lips because you will eat the fruit of your lips. So you continue to speak life. Say, no, no, no. God's got a plan for us. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to turn out fine. You continue just to confess the word of God. This is the year of recompense. This is the month of fruitfulness. This is the season we become fruitful. You just keep on speaking life. Put your hand to the plow. Don't look back. May the God give you hope and encouragement. For those that are looking for babies, barrenness is broken tonight in the name of Jesus. Those that are looking for work, new work, your, what, the fruit of your hands will be celebrated. The fruit of your hands. We're starting to see it right now. The fruit of our feet got us into those fields. Why? It's faith. It's the kingdom of God. It's real. It produces for you. If I tell you about debt-free living, we'll bring the testimony, right? Glory be to God. But the fruit of the Spirit is your character. That you become a better person because you are in the kingdom of God. God's dealing with the love, your love walk, your joy, your peace, your um, faithfulness. He's dealing with all the fruits of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit in your life. Why? Because my life must bring him glory. My life must bring him, bring him praise. And God is protecting that which is his. He's putting a dome over that which is his. Your life belongs to him. That's a word of encouragement today. We are still in the 14 days of, of fasting and praying. And that your life is going to begin to respond to this message. Take time to sow seed. Get into the word. Take time to pray. Take time to get into his kingdom. Get involved in projects. Get rid of that attitude and believing that there's a plan B and the world can help you. The, the devil is a liar. I got, you got a legitimate reason why you need to go this way and that way and the Lord understands. He then told that man about even let the dead bury the dead. Stop waiting. He went, to go wait, went home to go and wait for his father to die. I'm waiting for this thing to happen. Let me first go and take care of this thing. The Lord says, no, you're not fit for the kingdom. But I'm prophesying that over you tonight, that you'll be fit for this kingdom. And you begin to make up your mind that the kingdom is your priority and that fruitfulness is the end game. And you will watch finances flow. You will find doors open to you. You will find the favor of God upon your life for you and your family and your home. You will sit on board, around boardroom tables. You will find doors opening all across the globe. Come on, Shan, that's for you tonight. God's hand is upon your life. For you and for Zion and for Danae, the family, God's got his hand upon your lives. For those that are in Cape Town and all that you are putting your hands on, it looks like it's tough. God, where's the resources? What are we going to do? Which are we going to go? The Lord says, keep your hand to the plow. We're going somewhere with this kingdom. This kingdom message is for you. It looks like nothing's happening in Zambia. Peter, I'm telling you, God says, put your hands to the plow, son. Put that kingdom message on the inside of you. Get intimate with the word of God. Let his mind come and be, become your mind. His, his great mind can rub off on my little mind and I can become what God has called me to be. This is for anybody across the globe. Anybody that is working in the kingdom of God. Let me tell you today as your apostle, as a born again man of God, the kingdom is real and God will not disappoint you. You were not schooled in this, in your formal education. And all you got was dark knowledge. But this is revelational knowledge. That the kingdom is a real place for people to function out of. So that their lives can become fruitful for the glory of God. May the Lord continue to strengthen you on every side. We're celebrating, I pray even for Iris, that there's a healing upon that vessel right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, that, that healing will flow right now, my God, to her. We're praying for those pastors and those leaders that have been calling for supernatural signs and wonders all the way out in Zimbabwe. Uh, Apostle Verumu, we bless you, sir. And we ask the Lord to come and strengthen you on every side, heal and deliver and set you free. We pray for our sons and daughters all the way in Cape Town, all those that are involved, even uh, Dr. Dr. Candace and, and her practice and all that God is doing for our families down in Cape Town. Brian and Aaron's down there right now. But the strength of God is coming upon everybody because everybody's coming to a season of tremendous fruitfulness. You will not earn what you earned last year. You will increase on every side. Signs and wonders will be a part of your ministry. You will experience the glory and the goodness of God as you continue to follow after the kingdom of God. 
Keep on pressing into the kingdom of God. We pray for the blessing of the Lord upon you, healing, wholeness. For those that we break that spirit of barrenness in the mighty name of Jesus, we lift up your name before the Lord tonight and we curse every place of barrenness and we decree and declare you will become a fruitful land, a delightful land for the kingdom of God. All that you set your hands to, it will prosper in Jesus' mighty name. We're speaking into a fresh season of fruitfulness. You are putting your hands to the plow. You are not looking back. This is your season. This is your time for you and your family. There'll be signs and wonders, miracles, financial miracles all around you, healing and wholeness for you and your family in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord said to you tonight, and here's your word, plow in hope. We love you. God bless you. We continue to pray tomorrow morning because you're going to start seeing the fruit of your hands and you're going to rejoice because of all that God has done in and through your life. We love you. So see this God has called you to. And um, let's keep on plowing and do it in hope. God bless you. Good night, everybody.